Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all trailblazers joining at this edition of Satak Service from across the globe. This is Manoj Nambarajan, and today it gives me great privilege to provide you all an overview on restriction rules, which is one of the critical data visibility related feature introduced by Salesforce of late. So I'd like to first wish you all a very happy new year ahead. I hope this year is a very fun filled and fulfilling year for you. And as far as my experience is concerned, I am an enterprise architect at Dell Technologies with 15 plus years of experience on Salesforce ecosystem. I'm also a proud inductee in Salesforce MVP class of 2022. I'm a Salesforce certified system and application architect. I have like 18 Salesforce certification and I'm a five star ranger. I'm among the top answer leader in a trailblazer answer community. Uh, one of the great places uh, which I feel it helps you to help others and share your expertise. I'm also an author at my own personal blog. I'm a contributor to sforcemaximizer.com as well as Salesforce knowledge articles. So now today let's look at our agenda. So it starts with restriction rules concept, like what it means, and then moving on to few org security enhancement related concepts. And then where do I use restriction rules or what are few use cases where restriction rules will really help in controlling data visibility. And then few setup considerations followed by a demo. And then some of the observations and few points which I learned, I will be sharing at the end of this presentation. And finally, a few reference materials I have used for this presentation today. So let's move ahead and learn what restriction rules is. So restriction rules conceptually is, as the name goes, the rule helps to restrict data visibility. So as against sharing rules, uh, which we all know helps to open up the data visibility, restriction rules is actually seen as an added layer on top of sharing rules to control the data that you would want to see, that you would want to really see. So what it means is, uh, as the picture shows here, we start any org, it starts with organization-wide sharing defaults. So that actually sets you the default access level for any object that you have in your org. It begins with that. And then you would write sharing mechanisms to open up data visibility. For example, you can have situations where, uh, let's take account or opportunity, for example, where the organization by default is set as private. And uh, in that situation, only the owner will be able to see the data and anybody above the owner, as far as role hierarchy is concerned, they will be able to see the data. So if you have a situation where uh, you need another uh, team to also have a look at the data, then you would think about uh, writing a sharing rule for them. Uh, so this concept is actually uh, how sharing rules comes up into the picture in opening up data visibility. But now here is the kicker where restriction rules will come into the picture where there you can actually define your filter criteria or your record visibility condition for uh, the restriction rule to work and control the data visibility. So as the name goes, it helps you to restrict the data that you would want to see. And after that filter is applied, then the resulting data is what you would see in your system. So in a just, yeah, organization-wide sharing default, it's a default access levels defined in a system. And especially in situations where your OWD is private, or public read only, then uh, to open up data visibility, you write sharing rules. And after that, if you have use case where you want to further restrict the data visibility for a certain team, then restriction rules is a way to go. And restriction rules as of today, it is available in Lightning Experience in Enterprise, Performance Unlimited and Developer Editions. Now, as far as off security enhancement is concerned, uh, now restriction rules as such, provides access to subset of records. So as I mentioned earlier, it helps you to provide a subset of records after, after applying that uh, record filter or the record uh, visibility condition, so to speak, that you want to apply. And this is something that runs on top of the existing organization by default and the sharing rules that you have. So for instance, you, are, you have restriction rules here. So before restriction rules concept came into picture uh, with account access, uh, you could see a related task, event, and contract. So that was one of the use case or the common use case that we used to see, right? I mean, even if you gain visible to the account, by default, you automatically will get visibility to all the task, event, and contracts uh, in your org. 
but there can be uh, situations where a requirement will come like a particular user would want to see only the task that they are assigned to not anybody else or probably the task that is assigned to their team or specific role so those are some of the requirements that before restriction rules it was very hard to apply but after restriction rules yeah you can privatize these kind of access and meet those requirements the same goes with custom object also in situations where you have a master detail relationship built and which means uh, by default whenever you see the master record you will be able to see all the child records linked with the master object but there can be a requirement where they uh, a person who is actually able to see the master record would want to see restricted records part of the child record like a subset of child record would be the requirement uh, so before restriction rules we were not able to do that but after that restriction rules does really help you to meet that need and then the another example is the role hierarchy driven so role hierarchy be, based cascaded or implicit driven data visibility was something that you were not able to control before restriction rules came but now restriction rules actually helps you to control and provide a subset of uh, data now based on the criteria that you define so there are a lot of use cases uh, you can have your own use cases and at you know your own org that you can think about and see if restriction rules applies but predominantly from documentation and some of the common use cases that we see is what we see in the screen now and now where do you use i mean an extended uh, uh, use cases is what i share in this slide here so one is uh, one of the use case will be like if you want to restrict data visibility for very sensitive and confidential information yeah that can be one use case where restriction rules can be applied the next will be like uh, was shown in the previous slide task event contract uh, to be seen for a specific sales team members yeah restriction rules will help you another use case will be it is applicable for custom object external object also contract event task timesheet and timesheet increase object and then the result of restriction rule is something that you can see it in searches, lookup, list view, report, software, etc. So the moment you apply restriction rules, these are the additional areas where the data visibility restriction will also be applied, like list view, lookups, report, uh, data query, etc. And now uh, in a pictorial representation, right? So what you see in the screen is uh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, kind of a uh, dark blue and light blue shaded data visibility is what we are trying to explain here so owd uh, is one way of uh, the base level of defining the data visibility then you come with role hierarchy and then you have sharing rule which is another sh sharing mechanism that we have and then manual sharing so these are the different types of sharing mechanism that i can say by which you can help to see the data and now the moment the restriction rule applies it and kind of filters out the data which is kind of shown in the dark blue shade that we see in the screen so the moment uh, restriction rules comes into place then as i mentioned earlier the subset of data is what you would see based on the criteria that you define in the restriction rules now so this is what we see as far as how restriction rules plays a role now there are a few setup considerations which i want to call out here though uh, setting up restriction rules uh, since i believe spring 22 if i'm not wrong could be winter 22 also uh, is it will help you to uh, set up restriction rules directly uh, in the ui under object manager so as you end up doing that let's look at few profile permissions that you need to understand while you want to build a restriction rule so the first one is manage sharing so that is one of the critical profile permissions, either way a permission set or at the profile level if you define, then that will help the user assign to that profile permission or permission set to create and manage restriction rules. And the next piece is view setup and configuration coupled with view restriction and scoping rules. So when you have a profile with both of these permissions enabled, uh, I think even if you uh, uh, enable the view restriction and scoping rules to my understanding, view setup and configuration also gets auto enabled. So a profile with both these permissions enabled, it will help you to view the restriction rules. So these are the profile permissions and that will help you to either create restriction rules and manage them or at least view them. Then uh, there's a call out on Salesforce classic. So one of the items which I have seen from documentation is uh, it's better you turn off Salesforce classic for restriction rules to be fully effective. Uh, now, uh, I could be wrong here, but my understanding based on the reason behind this is there are few concept and sharing mechanisms that will work better in lightning experience compared to uh, uh, Salesforce classic. 
So which is where restriction rules comes under that criteria. It works better in lightning experience mode compared to Salesforce Classic. So with that in place, I believe we have now seen the concept. We have also seen few use cases uh, or common use cases where restriction rules will help you to control data visibility. Now we have also seen a few of the profile permissions and uh, a particular call out on Salesforce Classic. So with that in place, let's move to the demo. So as you can see in my screen, I have uh, logged into one of my uh, dev org. Uh, so let's first uh, look at a data based on which I will be running the demo. So there is a particular text record which I have created its account. And then this account, as we scroll down, yeah, I have created a custom object called customer visit. Uh, so it's basically, and the type of customer visit that you do for an account. Normally the sales team members, uh, they will be visiting the respective contacts of an account and uh, they would be kind of uh, noting the purpose of those visit uh, and what type of visit uh, was that. So that was a uh, main purpose behind uh, this object getting created. Uh, so we have an account. There are four custom visits I have created. There's a record type also over here, which is different and the type of visit also. Now let's go to how the sharing settings are defined for this object. So when I go to sharing settings here, so to set the context, if you look at account, so account uh, OWD, the organization by default setting is defined as private here. And if you look at our custom object, which I have created, which is customer visit, that is also private, okay? And then there is also a sharing rule which I have created. Like any customer visit created by the user will be shared with a user who have their role as CFO with access as read only. Uh, now we will be seeing one user assigned to this particular role who will be able to see the data. But um, at the end, this is a context that we have. So there are uh, account. There, are, there is an account with OWD set as private. Uh, customer visit is another custom object which I have created for which the OWD is also private. And then there is a sharing rule which is created where we are opening up the data visibility to a user uh, with role assigned as CFO for all the records created within the system and the access level is read only. Okay. So with that in place, let's go to the object manager and let's check on our customer visit object. So I'm doing a simple search here. So as we saw earlier, we actually saw a list of objects where you can create restriction rules. So custom object is one of them. Right now, to my understanding, creating a restriction rule at the standard object like account, uh, opportunities, uh, probably still in the works, it's not there yet. But, but as of today, yeah, uh, custom object is one of them where you can create restriction rules. So as you scroll down to the left pane, restriction rules is something that you can easily see. So when I click on it, from a UI standpoint, this is the place where you can actually create restriction rules. And uh, for a custom object, you can create up to two active rules at a given point of time. So there are two rules that we see in the screen here. And when you click new rule button here, this opens up a page where you can create your restriction rules. So you can give, in, you can give your own name and these active checkboxes there. Now the critical piece of restriction rule are these two sections. So one is the user criteria. There is a permission criteria also. So either you define the user criteria or the permission criteria, but ultimately this kind of defines the user for whom the restriction rule should be applied. So if you select the user criteria and if I click like what all fields are available, you can select all the user fields that you have to including the custom fields, whatever you have in the system, it will be seen here. And then uh, you can actually, uh, so if I uh, take as an example that right, user active, uh, which is a boolean flag. So you can select the operator that you want and then uh, the type is either boolean or current user. If you click current user, then you can also define another field referenced value for it. And all the fields over here will be displayed. So this is where you actually define based on the criteria options that you have, you define for which user the restriction rule should be applied. And then if we move down, uh, we have the record criteria. So the record criteria actually defines for all the records which is part of this object. And when you click on find a field, you can actually get a chance to select all the fields that you want. 
part of this. Uh, also, cross referencing is also possible. Like if I select account, then I can cross reference to account and select the required field accordingly, account ID, account number, any field that you want. So even if you select a particular field based on the operator, you can either define a string value or not. So earlier we saw two restriction rules, which is already there in the system, right? So let's go and understand what it relates to. So one of them which I have, which is active is uh, visit primary, right? So if I click the edit option here, so this is visit primary and that relates with the record type that I have created for this object. And what I am trying to say with this restriction rule is any user where their department, so I'm making use of the department field in the user object. So anyone with user department as sales, should be able to see the customer visit, which is part of the record type visit primary. That's it. So here at the first level, we have defined uh, for which user this restriction rule is applicable for. So here we are defining for sales team, where the department is sales, and then for what type of record they want to see. And here we are telling them or telling the system that for record type with visit primary, yeah, have sales uh, uh, see those customer visits, which relates with this record type. Uh, there is one more restriction rule which is inactive, but just for us to understand, if I click edit here, uh, so I have put a description. So that is also recommended. Like whenever you create a restriction rule, do ensure like you define a restriction uh, rule description so that it is meaningful for others. So here we have defined a user criteria. It I have followed the same example of defining for user where the department is here. I have defined that as a user criteria. And then what I have also defined is uh, the sales user should be able to see only the customer visit record where the custom field department type, which is a pick list value is sales. I can also do a field reference here and I, uh, also define another alternative accordingly, like select another cross reference value and put it there. That's also one way. If not, because it's a pick list, you will see the pick list drop down here and you can select the value that you want. So here really we saw sales, right? So I'm going to just define it. I'm not going to edit it and just click cancel over here. Yeah. So these are the two records that we have. So now as far as our uh, demo is concerned, now um, let's see how the restriction rule, which is active is coming into play. So now earlier we saw uh, a sharing rule, right? If you all remember, there is a sharing rule that we created there. We have defined like for all the customer visits, uh, let the sharing be open for users where the role is CFO. So this was the sharing rule that we created earlier. And the access given them is read only. So I am now going to pick a user who is assigned to this CFO role. So this sharing rule is opening up the data visibility, but on the other end, we have a restriction rule, which is defining what exact type of data this user would want to see. And we all know for this test account, there are four customer visits that is created. So now let's see how the restriction rule comes into play. So this is one of the uh, user that is assigned to that particular role. So once I log in, So I hope this works. I click on account. Yeah. So if we scroll down, now the result is, since the record type uh, driven restriction rule is active, the user should be able to see only two customer visit records. So let's see what happens. I scroll down here. Yeah, it's two. Visit primary, and even if I, even if I click view all also, there won't be any. Only two inside. So this is the way by which the restriction rule has come into effect and it has restricted the data visibility that the user want to see. Now let's go one step up. Now earlier we saw that for that record, right? So for that record, we had two restriction rules. One was active and another one is inactive. So what happens if we have both of them active? How will Salesforce react to it? Oh, I think I have to log out one second.
Yeah, good. So we have logged into the admin user. Yeah. So let's go to our setup. So here we have the object here readily available. I have clicked on it. I could say restriction rules here. So here, what I will do is I will activate the second rule. So the first rule is a record type driven data. And now the second one is department type. So one of the record has a department uh, value different where the department type is sales. So if I come here, yeah, department type is sales, right? So we have two record where record type is visit primary and only one of them has department type as sales. So my expectation is since both of them are active, what should be the result? I'm expecting only one record to be seen. So let's see what happens. So with both of them effective, let's go to the account again. And as I scroll down, great. So only one record is visible. So if you have more than two, Salesforce will take the net result and then display the uh, final data that you would want to see. So this is how if you have multiple restriction rules activated, this is the end result. So this is good. I'll log out again so that my login doesn't get messed up. Okay. So now uh, uh, in our deck, I think we also saw one of the use cases about task, right? Which is one of the very common use cases that we have. So let's see if we have any restriction rules defined for task. So I'm going back to the object manager. As I go here, let me look at our task content. Okay, so task also will have a restriction rule or option uh, seen here. And here, what I have done is we have an active task created, and the description is so for an active user. The user should be able to see only the task where that user is the owner. So the logged in user should be the owner of the task and only those tasks should be displayed, which is what this restriction rule tries to say. So we can, uh, it's an ownership driven uh, restriction uh, record created is what I have defined here. But ultimately, this is one of the very common use cases that we see as a play for any out uh, because account and task, they go hand in hand the moment you see, uh, not only account, I mean, any master object, if that has a task linked with it, and then the moment you have access to the master object, all the tasks will be visible for that user. But this is a criteria which will further restrict it. And by this criteria, what we're trying to do is only open the task which is assigned to the logged in user uh, from a data visibility standpoint. So with that in place, and since this rule is active, let's try to create... Okay, so what I will do is I will create or maybe I'll delete this task. Okay, let me go ahead and create a new one. So it's a call, and I'm putting view data as 26. I will assign this related to the second and assign this to not myself, but that first user. Restrict sales. Uh, maybe I'll put it like in progress. See. Okay, now let me create one more task, which is another, uh, maybe, yeah, uh, call one. See, 
assigned to myself, which is the admin login and in progress. So we have like two task creator, okay? There are two task creator. Both of them are due for uh, January 26. Now what happens when you log in as that user? You log in as this user. With that, restriction rule is in place right so the restriction rule task i think because it gives you that ownership driven kind of a field referred uh, record criteria you can also uh, write in such a way like any task assigned to that person and if the logged in user is the same user open up the task or from an ownership also you can define it so here to my understanding so other is the only one which i created now click view more yeah 26 is, uh, has come here, which is the newly created one. There are three remaining others which I tried for demo already assigned to this user, but typically these are the four uh, tasks which is assigned to the user. Earlier we used to say only three, but now the fourth one, which is the recently created has come, and that is uh, to the uh, user that is assigned to. For an admin login, these will be seen anyway because uh, they have view all visibility. So view all and modify all are the profile permissions where restriction rules will not be affected. But on the other side, yeah, with that criteria in place, this is the end result. Uh, the new uh, task got opened up. And now, if I log in as this user, right, as another option, should not be able to see any task that is linked to that user because it's a second user that we have to which the sharing rule is effective and they should be able to see the account. So I'm going to the app here. Click on account. Click here. See, there is nothing task assigned. Typically, before restriction rules, yeah, all the tasks will be seen here. But now this is another user who has access to this record because of the sharing rule. But no task is seen to that user because nothing is assigned to this user. So this is where the restriction tools come into effect based on the criteria that we have defined. So I hope with this demo, you would have understood like how you can apply restriction rules for the few use cases which I have shown here. You could also have your own use cases. So think about ways by which if you have a situation where you want to control data visibility, yeah, see if restriction rule is an answer for that. So with that, I hope this demo was very helpful. Now let's go back to few of the observations or learnings which I have that I learned as part of going through the restriction rules topic. So first one is users could still see the records they had access to previously in search results. So initially you have already done the search result or maybe in the list view, the record label and the link will still be there. But after the restriction rule is applied and the moment you click on it, you will get insufficient privilege error. The same will go for the uh, chat or post also. And the next one is cloning of record. So cloning of record is not possible if the record has a lookup to the record not visible to them via restriction rules. So restriction rules, one of the use cases is like we saw like lookup search results is also impacted, right? So this is an extended version of that use case where even if you try to clone, a record where the lookup field points to a record that has been taken out from a restriction rule standpoint, the moment you clone, will be hitting the error. The next one is restriction, restriction rules aren't applied in system mode or for users of view all, which is what we saw with in our demo where the admin was able to see all the uh, tasks, right? Irrespective of re restriction rule because of the profile permission like view all and modify all, which will supersede everything. And then the next one is you can have up to two active restriction rules per object in enterprise and developer edition, which is what we saw earlier in the demo. But for performance and unlimited edition, you can have up to five restriction rules per object. And as a best practice, yeah, have one restriction rule at a time. Because if you have multiple, then probably as the data volume grows, the time taken to evaluate could be a question. And you would never know which restriction rule will come as an end result if you have more than one being active. Uh, and then currently the criteria is limited to the equals operator that we saw earlier while we were defining the restriction rule. Equals was the only operator that is available and doesn't support formula fields. The other observation is as of Spring 22, we can include pick list fields while defining restriction rule criteria, which is what we saw earlier in the demo where for the department type dropdown, the pick list value was available while we were uh, creating the restriction rule.
The next one is as of winter 22, which is where the restriction of creation via the object manager and user interface driven creation is supported as of winter 22. And then it's recommended to turn off Salesforce Classic for restriction rules to work because of few sharing uh, mechanism driven reason. And then uh, it's also recommended to index the field part of restriction rules so that whenever the data volume increases, for example, earlier we saw department type as one of the biggest drawdown, which where the restriction rule got applied, right? So for the evaluation to continue and uh, speed up when the data volume grows, it's better like you identify what all fields are there in the restriction rule and try to index that to improve the evaluation performance. And then finally, it's related with activity timeline. So ensure that you use activity timeline instead of open activity history because there is a limitation of the number of records that can be seen in the uh, related list view. So you could see a situation where if you are still continuing with open activity history and when restriction rule is also applied, in the related list view, you may not be seeing all the records after the restriction rule is effective. So that is one of the known issue and I have shared the link also. With that, uh, that is from my end. So these are the reference materials I have used uh, for walking uh, through the restriction rules today. Thank you.